The ceiling acoustic panels are up in the theater and I've redone my measurements and taken new calibrations with Anthem Arc. Did it make any difference? So what might be the last acoustical treatments in my room are in. I put up eight GIK 2A uh, 2D acoustical panels on the ceiling. I've been fighting them with the glue and the spray glue and all that stuff. But they're up right now. They seem to be holding pretty good. And I finally had my chance to bust out Anthem Arc with my AVM 70 running the latest production release 1.6.10 remeasure the space. I have my old calibration and measurement set from before putting the panels in. And was it transformative? Did ceiling panels make all the difference in clarity and dialogue quality? Well, from the measurements, not really. It's actually fairly disappointing looking at the at various speakers and their like overall measurements kind of side by side. Any real differences in some of these uh, some of these plots? Is it even due to the speakers or, or you know, slight variations in where I might have put the mic, the mic from measurement to measurement? So I, I don't really know kind of what I was expecting. Everybody says treat the ceiling. So anecdotally, we've watched a few movies with the ceiling panels in, and I would say it's hard to say, do I really notice anything being subjectively better? I don't know. It's impossible. I, for, for me, my ears acoustical memory from listening to the room before to after. I think what will have to happen is we'll have to watch a variety of movies, watch a variety of TV shows or content in there. Do do I find myself, does do my, does my wife find herself saying less, like what, you know, what did they say or, or needing to pop back and rewind to maybe understand a piece of dialogue or, or something like that. But in any case, they're in, they look cool. They really weren't that much money in this grand scheme of things, about five, 600 bucks for those panels. Could easily spend a whole lot more on acoustical treatments and that. It makes the room feel complete. It's aesthetically really nice. It looks like a complete theater, fully treated theater, having that, that space done. If we take a look in the room, just relative from the seating position, up through the front of the room, there's our screen area going up, going up. We kind of get an idea where these panels sit, where they lie. This should very much be the first reflection points. They're spread out again, the board with the two dimensional arrays and some foam behind them, all stuck up on the ceiling there. All of that sound coming from the front LCR array should be getting broken up, bounced around the room in different ways, but that's how they're up. The patterns are kind of inversely symmetrical. We have eight panels with four different orientations. So say the back left is in the same orientation as the front right and vice versa. The front middle left is the same as the back middle right, which gives four different orientations of the panels in each set of four from the group to the left to the group on the right. So let's take a look at Anthem Arc results. All right, so we're gonna look at five different speaker positions around the room. We're gonna look at the front LCRs, we're gonna look at the surround right, and we're gonna look at what is effectively the rear right Atmos speaker. And so I've, I ran, I, I kept my Anthem Arc save calibration set from before the panels. I did a new calibration set with the panels and was able to pull the curve viewers up uh, from both of those configurations and get these speaker measurements, the combined measurement of all of the, all of the places where the measurement was taken and get these side by side for different speaker positions. So notice here on the left, we have without panels, this is the center speaker. Over on the right, we have with panels, the center speaker. So there you go. Can you notice a whole lot of difference between those curves? I don't really know that I can. Maybe through this like couple hundred hertz range up to the 1K range, there's a little bit of a difference there, but I, it's so minor. All of this stuff is really, really, really minor differentials. Uh, and again, could be even just attributed to slight variations from where the tip of the mic might have ended up. Um, I did have the mic in similar positions as I follow the, the main listening position down in front, up and back and such. Uh, you know, I didn't, of course, get the mic into the exact, exact same position in space, probably still plus or minus a few inches. That's probably going to result in a little bit of variation in any measurement to any measurement. So is this the panels? Is this, you know, is this just measurement variation? I don't know. In any case, if, if, if I was really expecting or hoping that those panels might have done something to really 
you know, level some things out and, and tighten some things up from a curve fitting, uh, curve viewing perspective, it really didn't do much. And this is the speaker that I really would have hoped that it might have affected the most, right? The center channel, that sound going up, and, and then instead of reflecting back to the main seat, getting broken up, getting dispersed, and all of that. So that dialogue, the dialogue that you're hearing is coming, is the sound that's coming straight at you, straight out of the speaker, and, and not being muddied or affected by, by reflections. You might notice I do have a profile base here and profile mod, just in case anybody calls that out in the comments. We are looking at the same measurement curves. I just name them differently with regards to which profiles I set up in the AVM70. In my original uh, without panel measurement uh, base was profile one, but when I did the uh, adjusted or the second round of, of measurements with the panels mod, I, I put my, my mod uh, entry as profile one. But this is has, has nothing to do with arc. As you can see, what's turned on in the curve viewer here is show combined measurements unaltered. There's no level adjustments. There's no arc being applied. This is the raw combined measurement of all of the microphone locations that Anthem Arc picked up. So that's the center channel. Here we have the front left without panels, front left on the left, without panels, front left on the right. And once again, any major differences? Do you see them? I, I kind of kind of don't. Maybe this little knoll here disappeared a bit. This is a knoll right around 200 hertz. If we look at 200 hertz, it did, did kind of pop that off a little bit. So great, nice to see a little leveling off there. But that's really the only kind of major, I guess, major, major impact. Um, up here around 500, there's a bit more of a rise relative to here. So maybe this comes through a little flatter, but there's a little more squirreliness. So yeah, again, the panels, are they doing something super, super valuable there? Maybe not. Let's take a look at the front right. We have without panels, front right on the left, with panels, front right on the right. So again, I'll try to keep this consistent in case you're looking at this in YouTube and you're kind of zooming up and, and trying to compare the without panels is always on the left and the with panels is always on the right. So we still have the same types of peaks. We still have this peak, this blip here coming through. Maybe a little flatter, again, through this uh, through this few hundred hertz range. That does look a little nicer, you know, in this in this stretch up to about 1K versus over here where we kind of go down and, and we, we it squirrels around a little bit more. That's pretty cool. I wouldn't have minded to see some differences like that more consistently uh, through more of the speakers, I guess. And, and if that's attributed to the ceiling panels, that's pretty awesome, right? You're getting getting some smoothing effect. And, and that's that's probably I think some of the most or, or the largest difference between the without and the with. Going forward, we here we have the surround right without panels, surround right on the left without with panels, surround right on the right, and yeah, not too much. Maybe a little more leveling out. Not even not even really here. We're above the 70 dB mark, pretty much the same way on both of these we still get the rise in the higher frequencies pretty common with these focal 1000s in terms of the surround difference not too much uh, again ceiling panels i think are really there more for the benefits of the lcrs than anything else but just for the sake of interest and completeness i figured i would toss in a, a couple of other speaker positions just to see uh, regardless so there's the surround right and then the last one i have here this is without panels height to right on the left with panels, height to right. On the right, this is basically my rear overhead, right-hand side speaker. And again, not really, not really much difference going on. We've got some dips, some dips, still present kind of across the board, the same rises. Maybe a little more flat up across here. Uh, what is this? This is the 100 to few hundred dB range. Is that the panels, though, really, is that speaker position? Keep in mind, this is sound firing straight down, so that would have to come down, bounce around, hit those panels. Probably less to do with the panels and maybe a little bit more to do with these speaker positions with, you know, minor mic variances or nothing transformative, nothing incredibly significant of record. So there you go. Not a whole lot of... of difference is there really a whole lot of merit in those ceiling panels for me for my room for my space 
with was what with what was already treated maybe not maybe i i didn't even didn't even need them but i'll, I'll be paying attention kind of anecdotally to see if i can notice anything here as, as time goes on impactful benefit in any way paying particular attention to dialogue clarity that's something that i value a lot in my spaces and in my setups as i'm getting older and and my hearing is going through its own changes in life like my eyes and everything else maybe the two a's aren't enough on the ceiling maybe they're not doing enough they're not thick enough or originally gick wanted me to use those larger like three-dimensional like brick pattern uh, type uh, ceiling treatments maybe those would have done quite a bit more in terms of breaking things up but i just didn't really feel that they were the right kind of thing for the room the right kind of look for the room and they were styrofoam i didn't really feel like trying to paint them and and, and all of that so i made the decision to switch over to these two-way panels it is what it is i suppose but they're in they look cool hopefully they're doing something and that's that so let me know what you think about ceiling treatments if you had a transformative experience with the ceiling treatment in some of your spaces, you know, or, or not, either way, sound off in the comments. Otherwise, please do all the regular YouTube stuff. Like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications. Um, I appreciate anything that you might do to support the channel. There's super thanks, there's channel memberships, there's merchandise. We have Amazon affiliate links, and anything that you do there is greatly appreciated. So, let me know if you have any questions. Thanks for watching. Coming back for more home theater discussion and fun.